My favorite Lionel engine is one of the first I picked up when I started collecting in the early 70s. It was the 226E. I was just struck by the feel of quality, how quiet it ran, the proportions, the balance, and the headlight, and the red light under the boiler. It was made by Italian immigrants who loved Joshua Lionel Cowan. They were dirt poor in Italy. They came to America. Cowan gave them a job. They were able to buy a house, send their kids to good schools, go to church, the American dream. Cowan used to walk the assembly lines and say hello. He knew workers by their first name. They loved him, and that love came out in how hard they worked and the pride they took in their work. The 226E is a symbol of America at her manufacturing best. What toy today is going to be around 70 years from now and give you the same feeling as the 226E? Well, back in the early 70s, the way information was disseminated was by word of mouth. You would go to train meets and you'd talk to uh, knowledgeable collectors and slowly you'd learn what trains were rare, what trains were common, what are hard to find, and the values and so forth. And after doing this for a while, it occurred to me that if there were a book with color pictures and an explanation of what were the valuable trains in each category and sort of a history of the Lionel Company, there would be a market for that book. I certainly would buy it if it were available. So I talked to my good friend Jim Tuohy, who was one of the finest writers in the, in the city, in Chicago, living in Chicago at the time. And I said, Jim, what do you know about toy trains? And he said, absolutely nothing. And I said, neither do I. Uh, let's write a book. So fortunately, I ran into Dave Garrigas and John Palm, who, in our view, are the two most knowledgeable Lionel collectors in the country. And we did a basic reporting job. We sat down for eight hours a day. We went through the threes, the the streamliners, we went through the steam engines, the diesels, the passenger sets, the freight cars, and at the end of each chapter, we gave a pecking order of the, the hardest to find cars in each category. But we needed money to publish the book. It would cost $20,000 to produce 10,000 books. Well, the book was going to sell for $10, so all we had to do was sell 2,000 books to get our money back to pay the loan. So I went to a, a bank in Wilmette, Illinois, but I knew the president of the bank and I wanted to run through my pitch with him. I didn't think he would loan me the money because I didn't think his bank was big enough, but maybe uh, one in Chicago would, but I wanted to do kind of a rehearsal dry run. So I went through, I, I explained how much it would cost. We only had to sell 2,000 books to break even. There were about 7,500 members in the TCA. And he listened to me and he said, uh, I don't think you have to go downtown. I'll loan you the money. And now this was about 1974, and this is the first book on Lionel with color pictures, kind of a collector's guide, and history. 